All right, so we are landing in a new terminal today, Terminal 4. So we are going to give you a walkthrough and see if it's any different than the other terminals that we normally land in. I'm assuming there's going to be e-gates, um, but let's, let's see. Follow me. Navigating the Cancun airport can be really stressful and can get your vacation started off on the wrong foot. And believe me, I know because it's happened to me. So in this video, I'm going to give you a complete walkthrough of Terminal 4 at the Cancun airport, which was also a new terminal for me, and give you important tips that will help you avoid some of the mistakes that I've made when arriving to the Cancun airport. So the first stop after you deplane is always immigration. So make sure you have those passports handy. I always put mine in one of those neck holders. In fact, I will put all of my favorite travel must-haves and gear in the description below but you do not have to fill out any forms anymore so you're not filling out any forms in the plane everything is done electronically when you present your passport so just follow the signs towards immigrations and another tip i give is if you have the luxury of choosing your seats on the plane try to choose them as close to the front of the plane as you can even if you can upgrade i'm not even saying business class but rows one through ten because the closer you are to the front the quicker you will get through the immigration lines. We're gonna see if they have e-gates here. We're gonna see um, how long the lines are. Make sure you stop at the restrooms because you never know how long those lines are gonna be. And of course, make sure the kids use the bathroom and have their devices charged and snacks ready because again, you're not gonna know how long the lines are until you get there. When you land, you have two options. You can go into, this is the immigrations, the, um, this is the staff booth, but then these are the e-gates and no one's here, so no one knows about it. So these you can go right through. You have to be over 18, a U.S. Canadian citizen. So let's go. We're going to go through. We made it through immigrations in minutes. So similar to Terminal 3, when you walk down the hallway, there's two areas. So you can either go through the staffed immigration or you can go through the e-gates. So if you don't care about your um, passport getting stamped, go through the e-gates if you're over 18 because it's gonna, going to save you a lot of time. Now it's going to give you a ticket. Let me show you the ticket. So it's going to um, spit out this ticket. You have to save that. So put that into your passport so you don't lose that because when you're departing, they're going to check this. So far, it's very similar to Terminal 3. We even have a little duty-free. The only thing that I notice is a little bit smaller. Um, Terminal 3 seems to be a little bit bigger, but they do have duty-free here where you can pick up a bottle of alcohol if you want one in your room you can do that here just make sure you don't go over the limits of three liters okay so made it through customs so first it's immigrations then it's customs customs you can't film either but it is a random sometimes they'll pick you to look through their bags sometimes they don't now it's time to find the transportation and this time we are working with travelingos so they've set up our transportation it's not nacho it's it's different um, so we're going to now try to find our transportation and see what that looks like. I'm assuming it's pretty similar. We're probably going to walk outside and see if they have a sign. Um, maybe get a margarita, a really expensive one. We'll say here we go. So one thing I forgot to mention is where you stop to get your checked in luggage. And the reason for that is if you follow me, you know, I never check in a bag. I always just do a carry on only. And yes, it is possible. Even if you are staying for a week, I've done it before and I do several videos on my channel to give you tips on how to do it. But I know that's not always possible. So the carousels to pick up your checked in luggage is right after immigrations before customs. This process can take up to an hour, however, sometimes even longer. So if you can just do a carry on only, it will save you so much time. About exchanging money. Usually at the airport, it's going to have the highest exchange rate. You really don't need to because Cancun widely accepts the US dollar and Canadian dollar. But if you want and you get to the airport, you want to do it here. Otherwise, you could ask your driver and take us up at a bank if, um, if you wanted to exchange for pesos. All right, so now we're going to see if they, if they have the infamous shark tank here in Terminal 4 like they do in Terminal 3. And remember, no gracias, no gracias, no gracias. Don't make eye contact. Come on. Before heading into the Shark Tank, a lot of people ask me about renting a car. So it's something that I personally would not do. There's just so many scams and corruption related to renting a car in Cancun. I know some people have done it with no issues, but I've just heard so many different scary stories that I just personally would not feel safe doing it. And here I am going through the Shark Tank, which is the infamous area right before you leave the airport where salespeople approach you to try to get you 
to buy timeshares and excursions and dinner experiences and all sorts of things. And this is where scams can happen. So that's why I say, don't stop, don't make eye contact, just say no gracias. And actually this time it wasn't too bad. Usually when I'm filming, they don't approach me, but don't stop, just keep going. All right, I don't need this anymore. Took off my sweatshirt, I'm loving my new sweatshirt, collect moments, not things. Um, it's definitely like 90 something degrees. So we're gonna keep walking, see if we can find our transportation, hoping they have a sign. Maybe still get that expensive margarita, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what they have. We're gonna keep walking and take you through and, and let's go. So the inside of Terminal 4 is very similar to Terminal 3 and easy to navigate, but let's review real quickly the areas you need to stop once you get off the plane. So the first one is Immigrations, where you're gonna get your passport stamped or you're gonna go through the E-Gates if you wanna save time. Then it's duty free if you need to pick something up. And after that, you're gonna go to the carousel to get your checked in luggage. Now, if you didn't check in a bag, you can go straight to Customs. So that will also save you time. Now, customs is hit or miss. Usually they just have the officers with the dogs. They'll be sniffing the bags. Sometimes they may ask to look through your luggage, but often you can just walk right through. So I was off the plane and through the airport in less than 15 minutes, which is unusual, but I do think it's because I flew in on a Sunday morning, which is what I've been doing lately when I go to Cancun, because the airport is so much easier to navigate. You get through so much more quickly, and also there's less traffic on the road. So the mini mart is the first thing that you will see as you are walking outside, and you may wanna stop here, especially if you have a long ride to the resort for some snacks and drinks. And they also have sunscreen, so if you did not check in a bag, you could get that. And I thought in general, the prices were pretty reasonable considering it was the airport. Six pack of beer was around six to eight dollars, depending on which one. The sunscreen was around twenty dollars, which is again typical for an airport. So none of the drinks are cold, and I'm pretty sure they do that on purpose because they want you to go around the corner and get a nice cold drink from the bar, which is a lot more expensive, which I will show you in a minute. But they do have coolers and ice if you did want to buy some stuff and pack it in ice. And they had a pretty good selection of full-size bottles of alcohol as well. So if you did not want to buy something at Duty Free, you could get it here. And honestly, I did not think the prices were that much So different. let's keep making our way towards our transportation. But I did want to show you the food and drink options options, especially if you have to wait for other people to arrive, or again, maybe you're going to have a long ride to the resort. You will find these pop-up kiosks and little mini food carts all around the airport as you are leaving, and they usually have drinks and snacks, so if you wanted to grab something quickly, you could. Now again, the prices are pretty high. They are airport prices. Around the corner here, there is the welcome bar that has more substantial food and a full bar. Again, if you had to wait for somebody to arrive on their flight, this would be a good place to do Real it. Real quick, a lot of people ask me why I do a lot of voiceover. And here at the welcome bar is a perfect example of it because I was here trying to explain everything they had on the menu, how much things cost, but in the background was Billy Joel, funny or not, you're in Mexico and Billy Joel's blaring in the background and YouTube does not allow any copyrighted music even in the background or they shut down your monetization. So that's why you're going to hear me do a lot of voiceovers, especially in the resorts, because there's usually music playing in the background. Anyway, here I'm showing you the conversion. It's so important that you know the conversion rate because when I did the math, a margarita was $40. Yes, you heard that right, $40 for a margarita. Now I didn't get one here at the Welcome Bar, but I did get one at this little kiosk because the guy sold me in the fact that they put three shots of Patron into the margarita. So that would be around $30 or so here in the States. And that's basically two margaritas in one glass. So you could split it with someone, which is what I did. So then it's not so bad um, being like $20 per person. So if you're meeting a group and they're landing in a different terminal, they have shuttles that run very frequently from terminal to terminal. So all you have to do is go find the stand where you're going to wait for the shuttle and then it's gonna take you around to terminal to terminal. Really the experience in Terminal 4 was very similar to Terminal 3 and very easy to navigate. Now, the biggest tip I also give is to arrange transportation before arriving to the airport. This trip was arranged through Travelingo's agency, so they did all of that for me, but in the description, I will put my other favorite transportation companies that I always use whenever I come to Cancun. And the transportation company should give you exact instructions on how to find them at least two days before arriving to Cancun. 
Cancun. So if you haven't heard from them, you definitely want to reach out because they're going to usually tell you what color shirts they have, where to exactly find them when you come out, and they will have a sign with your name on it. One thing I will never do when it comes to transportation in Cancun, besides not renting a car, is taking a taxi. So I did that the first time I came to Cancun and got scammed. And I'm sure you've heard many stories about it. So my biggest recommendation is to take that private transportation. It does cost a little bit more, but I'm telling you, safety is priceless. And then the next question is always, how much is the private transportation? It really depends on so many different factors, like what time of day, how many people, how far the resort is. But any reputable company is going to give you a quote before asking for payment. So just do your research. You can shop around a little bit. Again, I will put the links to some of the ones that we use in the description below. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. And I will also do a video about my departure trip from the Cancun airport and give you some tips there. So keep an eye out for that. If you do have any other questions, please put them in the comment section below. I do try to respond to all comments and questions. And you can also find me on Instagram and TikTok.